Welcome back everybody. We do have a, another brew day today. Uh, this one is a oatmeal stout, almost like Uper's oatmeal stout that I brewed last year. If you haven't watched that video, I will put a link uh, up in the card so you guys can go check that out. Um, on this one, I did change the grain bill a little. I wanted to play around with it to see uh, what I could do by upping the roasted barley just a little bit. Um, always try and play it safe, that way it's still drinkable. So let's go ahead and get into the grain bill for this oatmeal stout. Eight pounds of Maris Otter, which would be 62.7% of my grain bill. One pound of flaked oats, which is 7.8%. 12 ounces of roasted barley at 5.9% and this is where I upped it. It was 8 ounces. I just upped it to 12 ounces. Uh, 12 ounces of victory malt which is 5.9%. 10 ounces of chocolate malt which is 4.9% of my grain bill. 8 ounces of flaked barley, which is 3.9% of my grain bill. 8 ounces of black barley, which is 3.9%. 8 ounces of crystal ADL, 3.9% of my grain bill. 2 ounces of chocolate malt, which is 1% of my grain bill. We'll get into the hops when we get to the boil. But um, as you can see, I always hand crank my grains sometimes the kids do jump in and help it takes a little bit more time as the little one can't do a circle he sometimes gets stuck but um yeah so i always hand crank most of the batches aren't that big i'm only making five gallons and um i actually i don't know for sure but uh i think it gives it a more even crush I would say a little bit slower than using a drill but um, I do it in the morning almost first thing then that way the grains can just sit there kind of warm up uh, because it was a cold day out probably about 35 um, I wanted them um, to sit inside anyway instead of sitting outside uh, and getting colder than bringing down my water temperature once I moved it from the boil kettle uh, over to the mash ton. But yeah, so uh, go ahead and mill all your grains. Uh, I think I said this in the last one. Um, I put my flaked oats or any kind of oats in after uh, I get this uh, milled. I do not put my oats into the crusher. Um, I feel when you do that it makes uh, the crushers uh, spread out just a little bit than some of the uh, oats or some of the grain can fall down there without uh, getting crushed. So here we are just looking at the crushed grains and now on this one I did forget to put the oats in the uh, bucket so what I did when I realized it, I just went back inside, got them, and obviously I, I put them in the, the mash ton. But so on this one, um, it, it's, it's pretty much the same as I do on all of them. I go ahead and uh, leave my grains inside, like I said. Then I bring them out when my mash and water is up to temperature just so that it keeps its temperature I can keep it as warm as I can then that way it doesn't bring down my water temperature that much so as you can see here I did remember that I had the oats so I went ahead and put those in um, the mash ton and then um, since I have a pump um, what I do is I just run my water uh, through the pump obviously with the mash ton on the ground and let the water transfer that way so I don't have to pick up the pot of water and dump it um, I'm looking I'm not sure what I want to do for my setup I don't know what kind of stand I want to buy or 
build but I think this way works pretty well uh, that way I don't have to lift anything uh, at the end obviously I do because I do put the uh, mash ton on the the table that I have so here we're gonna go ahead and start mashing in or getting the water in there so for the mash in on this one, uh, Beersmith did call for 156 and this is going to be a 90 minute mash. So we are going to have a little longer mash, but usually technically for me, uh, my stouts and some of my porters, I do mash in for 90 minutes instead of the 60. Uh, just give them time to rest. And because it is cold out, um, I think most of the time Beersmith does call for uh, your water for your mash in to be uh, 168. Um, I did take this a little higher just like in the last milkshake IPA because it's only 35 degrees out. So I wanted to make sure if anything my temp was a little bit over instead of under. I would hate to heat up some water. Then if you do hit uh, a little higher mash temp, um, you can just add ice cubes. That's what I do most of the time uh, to bring that temperature down to where you want it instead of, like I said, uh, heating up more water, wasting more time. Um, to me, in brewing, it's easier to bring the temperature down than it is to take the temperature up using a system like this if you want to call it a system so here just checking my um, temperature I think I was a little high um, in my temperature so I did have to stir and um, wait for it to come down now the good thing about this um, I must have thought that uh, my temp was a little bit high because as you'll see coming up, I did find more dough balls. Now they say if you underlet that you won't get as many dough balls. Um, I think that is true, but you still get dough balls. So don't think that you're not going to get dough balls if you bring the water in from the ball valve or whatever kind of valve you have. And obviously here you can see that the temperature is high because I'm stirring more to try and get some of that heat out of there and I do find some more dough balls so um, this brew day like I said was the day after the uh, milkshake IPA that is going right now so uh, I did have everything out there uh, ready to go but yep more dough balls So we did hit 157 um, on this one. So here we did hit 156. So we did come down a, a degree from uh, just, you know, swirling the water and getting it out there. So now um, after the 90 minutes is up, we can go ahead and check it. And on this one, I really did want to check it. Uh, because it was 35 out i wanted to see how these mash tons were holding up um, in the winter i've never had a problem uh, with them but i did uh, or it did stay at the 156 i didn't drop a degree or anything um, so that's always good that that tells me that they are insulated well and I can brew in the middle of winter. I'm sure at some point I will lose some uh, temp, but at 35 I'm not. So for the Vloroff, um, I did draw two pictures again, um, and it was pretty clear. Uh, I've been happy with how clear it's been in these recent batches, so that's good. So my first runnings came out to be 18.75 bricks. Um, so I was happy with that 
and here we go into the mash out obviously put your water in there disturb that grain bed and let it sit for the 15 minutes so that way we can try and pull as much sugar out of those grains as we can and then you'll floor off again I do believe my second runnings were nine bricks. I could be wrong, uh, but I did not write that down. So as we're going into the boil here, uh, we're looking at eight gallons of liquid. Now, that's usually what I do in almost every single beer I make. Beersmith calls for like, six and a half gallons or something like that but because my pot boils um, pretty much a gallon off the top over the hour I wanted to I need to make sure I have enough liquid in there um, here I am just playing in the foam that's starting to come up I do use firm cap so because I had eight gallons um, of liquid uh, 16 drops of firm cap and on this one the funny thing was i ran out of gas with like 20 minutes left so i did have to run to the store got a new uh propane tank and um when i hooked it back up and started going i was getting a lot of foam um i'm not sure why i don't know if the temperature just wasn't high enough uh through some of the boil um and because I got the new tank, there was enough pressure and all that that uh, made it start doing that. But I would say uh, for about 10 minutes, I was getting a lot of foam. I almost had a boil over, but that just goes to show you if you're brewing and when you get to the boil, you should stay uh, by the pot and watch it the whole entire time. Don't try and clean anything like that because at any point this thing could boil over you don't see it a lot you know when you're getting to the end of the boil so because i did run out of gas i did boil it uh for about 30 35 minutes instead of the 20 because obviously when the tank gets to the end i don't believe it's uh as powerful so i wanted to make sure that i did boil for the correct time at the full boil so i guess that's one tip uh that i would say is make sure you have enough propane um if you're not sure go get another propane tank um because like i said you'll be out there longer getting it back up to a boil and all that so yeah make sure you have enough propane if that's what you're using in your brew day so this is a 60 minute boil so once we hit the boil our only hop addition will be at that 60 minutes and it will be two ounces of willamette uh, mine the alpha was 4.8 and the beta was four so that is the only um hop schedule in this so boil for 60 minutes and then um obviously you're going to cool it down as fast as you can and put it into the carboy um, now on this because it was so cold and it was the uh, day after i made the milkshake ipa my hose was still frozen so all i did was keep it in the garage with a lid on it and let it naturally cool down most of the time i don't like doing this i could have made a uh, ice bath or something for it and put it in there but really I don't think it's necessary we'll see if there's any off flavors or anything like that from letting it cool down naturally which takes um, kind of a long time about four or five hours for me um, but not a big deal I did not get any footage of transferring it I'm not sure why I didn't but I can't find any so I'm taking it I didn't so for the yeast on this one, we are using the White Labs WLP007 yeast, which is the dry English yeast. I did make a starter for it. Um, I used a can of fast pitch uh, 
just to use up the cans I did, I did not make a starter using the wart from this batch, but um, I think that's okay. Uh, we'll see here in a second um, how it's doing. So as we can see, um, probably uh, 24 hours after um, it was uh, started, um, I had to put a blow off tube on it because it was going all over. I think when I checked it um, with a regular um, airlock on there, it was all the way up to the top. So I did have to put a blow off tube. It's going fine. So that is the brew day for this oatmeal stout. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I will have the full list, the full recipe with some comments on uh, the 31st Brewing website so you guys can stop by there and check that out. So until next time, happy brewing. Thank you for watching this video. Thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. Leave me a comment down below to tell me what you thought about this video. Also don't forget to subscribe and share and hit that bell so you know when new videos are coming out. You can check out these videos over here. Also head over to 31stbrewing.com for everything beer and home brewing related.